welcome back to another tutorial my friends we are painting uh, another landscape silhouette and I realize I haven't done like a non landscape in a very long time because typically I split them up I do like birthday cards or like wreaths or something not landscapey but I don't know I've just been on a roll with the landscapes and it's hard to stop when you get going and you feel good about what you're painting so I'm gonna roll with this while I have, while the dice is in my favor. Um, but I'm realizing now that I really should be painting more fall themed things considering these are all gonna be uploaded in October. But it's hard to get in that mood when you're painting in July. So maybe I can I don't know, autumn, autumnify some of these paintings in some way, but this is probably not going to be one of those that I autumnify. Um, this is going to be a pretty summery landscape, to be honest. But let's just see where we go. So I'm creating my gradient here. It's like a pink into a nude and then it's going to fade into a purple. And then or a violet, I don't know. It's this color. You want the top to be a dark purple. Okay, so that is not really what I thought it was going to look like, so I need to fix this. Um, the top needs to be way darker, first of all, and then something like that. I still want the top to be darker. What is this? This is like an aubergine color. That's more like it. Although I'm realizing now that I should have used my mop brush for this. But I'm going to leave it like this. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. And we're going to let this dry. And then we're going to come back to the next step. Okay, so I'm thinking this is dry. What we're going to do now is paint uh, our pink clouds. So I've taken the same pink that I used for the bottom here <clears throat> and I'm just going to, I'm using a size one brush. I'll go closer so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm starting, like I want my clouds to be uh, effortless looking, like not, like this is too smooth at the top here. So you can, the way that you can achieve something like this. First of all, this is way too opaque. I need to water it down a bit more. You start with the end of your brush and you angle it, I would say at a 45 degree angle to the paper. And then once you start going, you kind of smush your brush down and kind of lift up and down. And then uh, it'll look something like this but again still too too opaque for what i was going for here um you don't want too much water on your paintbrush because the drier that your paintbrush is i think the more of like a um 
an effortless look that it gives because it it's uh, not like a solid color. It's more sparse like this one turned out to be. But you can just experiment even on a separate piece of paper if you um, if you're not confident at the beginning, I get it. Or you don't have to do clouds at all, but I think they look really nice and they they add um, another level of detail to your painting. So I've been doing a lot of these types of clouds recently in my landscapes, whereas previously I did more wet and wet type technique clouds. Um, but because I've done so many of those kinds. I have been digging this style recently. So I'm just taking a little bit of that purple and I'm changing the colors <clears throat> of my clouds. I'm concentrating them towards this side. You don't have to. You can put them all over your piece of paper. It doesn't really matter. I think I'm kind of overdoing it with the clouds, honestly. It's a bit much, but whatever. It's my motto. <sighs> whatever. I'm really glad the weather isn't great out right now because I don't feel guilty being inside painting. <clears throat> so once you're happy with your clouds, I'm gonna zoom out. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, there's something wrong with my throat. I'm going to pick up some white And I'm going to tap it against another brush. And this is white watercolor. I want to make this look like a, a little bit mystical. Not too much. I don't want it to be like space, space mystical. But just a few stars here and there is fine. Ooh, I wonder what it would look like if I actually added some white to these clouds to the base made them look a little more like cotton candy fluff oh that didn't really do anything okay and the other thing i'm going to do with the white is add a moon over here So white watercolor and I'm just painting a circle like so and I'm going to kind of have a few streaks going through it because then it kind of looks cloudy a little bit. And you can take white and extend those cloudy features like on either side. If you want, just be careful that you don't add too much water because then it'll look kind of cauliflowery. Something like that. I don't know if I like the look of that, but whatever. That's not the main um, feature of our painting here. So now we're going to take black watercolor 
and basically create the silhouette. So <clears throat> we're gonna have kind of a mountainous region and we can always adjust this later, but it's going to be cutting across the bottom portion of our clouds. Like this. And our mountainous region is going to have a little lake within it. So it's gonna come, it's gonna be something like this. It kind of reminds me of Iceland. Iceland had a lot of these peninsula towns or towns that looked like this. <laughs> So <clears throat> don't make this straight because then it won't look natural. Something like that. And you can fill everything else in with the black. And I'm gonna have to do, I think, a few layers of the black to darken it, because you can see the pink through some of it. Um, and we want to add some details on top of the black, which is not what I usually do. Usually it's just the black silhouette, but this time we're gonna add lights and stuff for the town that borders this, uh, beautiful landscape but yeah we stayed in a little village like this in Iceland where it was obviously coastal because Iceland is an island and uh, it was some sort of like one of the one of the harbors there like it was very industrial. It's very interesting. If you live in Iceland, like your job options in terms of what career path you take are very much determined by where you live. Which I guess is the case everywhere, but even more so here in, sorry, in Iceland. Okay, so it'll look something like this. You can even add a little island within that if you want. Vary it up a little bit, spruce it up. But I quite like this, so I am going to go ahead and let this totally dry and then we can add some features that are going to complete this painting. Because as nice as this looks right now, we can make it look even better. Okay, hopefully the black is dry because now we're going to be adding some fun details. So you can use either white or yellow for this, whichever one is brighter or more opaque for you. Um, I'm gonna try white. I might 
changed to yellow. But we want to add all these tiny dots along the coast of this black because we want to make it look like there's a, you know, buildings that are, that have their lights on at night. And you don't have to do like a straight shot across, but um, make it sporadic. And you can differ the heights of them. I actually don't like how that looks, so I'm going to paint over that with black. So this will work on both sides of the lake. Like so. I'm kind of tempted to add some kind of, not skyscraper, but like an antenna or something that's coming up to make it look to add something to this painting because it look like it looks nice but why not make it look even nicer what could we add like a flying space station or something <laughs> over the sky let me <clears throat> quickly look up what that even looks like Okay, so I looked up images of this. You can just look up um, space station silhouette and you'll get the exact same images as me. Um, I just don't know which one to choose. It looks really odd. It's not really what I thought it was going to look like. I am definitely going to switch actually to my size one brush because it's very square and geometrical geometric so it kind of looks like maybe I should go a little closer <sighs> I'm gonna paint the center part first I don't want to make it massive but I recognize that that is where this is gonna end up because of ah that was not intentional so it looks like it's made up of all these little chambers. Kind of like a caterpillar. Like that. And then it has this extension on each side.
somebody that works with NASA is going to look at this and laugh. I don't know what I'm looking at, guys. It's something in the sky that's flying. It looks like it's intentional, so it'll look good, I hope. <laughs> so this one looks like it's attached on this side. I don't know what what is going on with this thing. It kind of looks like a geometric dragonfly so far, or an old school plane. <clears throat> but I'm just going to keep following this silhouette reference that I have and hope for the best. So it seems to have this second chamber thing. on this side. Then it has something at the end. I don't know what these are. are they like giant solar panels that power the thing. Because I mean, I guess you don't have an infinite, infinite amount of gasoline in space. I don't know how it works, but that looks very odd. I don't know how I feel about that. It looks a little too, I, I should have added a hot air balloon in hindsight, now that I'm thinking about it, but what's the saying? Hindsight is 2020. Been saying that a lot recently. Just want to darken my moon a little bit. All right, <clears throat> I think we're gonna stop there. This tutorial is long enough. You can peel off your tape. I clearly did not do a very good job taping, but uh, there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to hit like, it helps me with the algorithm. Subscribe for future tutorials, and I will be sure to see you in the next one.